boys and girls, I found my book over and under uh, the pond. Um, it's a wonderful story that uh, tells us what's above on the top of the pond and what's below it. And I'll be careful to show you these pictures. They're a little hard to see sometimes. This is written by Kate Messner, and the art is by Christopher Silas Neal. Remember we did Over and Under the Snow? Well, this is the same people. Um, let's go ahead and look how they wrote the word under. As you go underwater, it looks like water. Um, that's the title page over and under the pond. And oh, look what they show us on this one page. All the fishies in a, that's a school of fish. Did you know that um, a group of fish together is called a school? Yeah, and so are froggies. It's interesting what's called a school. And here's the title page and the copyright page. It's called Over and Under the Pond. Over the pond, we slide spat, splashing through lily pads, sweeping through reeds. And do you see these reeds down here? Cattails, they look like sausages on a stick or a hot dog on a stick. That's a cattail. And here are the lily pads out here. And there they are on their little boat. The water is a mirror fleeting, reflecting the sky, sunshine and clouds, then a shadow below. What's down there, I ask, under the pond, Mom says. The little boy wants to know what's down there. What's inside the pond? Okay. Under the pond is a whole hidden world of minnows and crayfish, turtles and bullfrogs. We're paddling over them right now. Can you see their boat right here? And their little heads looking down into the water. There's fish and there's the turtle and a frog and more fish. Let's see if there's, oh, there's a crawdad. Some people call them crayfish. Where I grew up, we called them crawdads. Some people call these guys mud puppies. Look at that. There's a whole world under the pond. Over the pond, we skim past tall rushes, whirligig beetles, loop and twirl. And there are the whirligig beetles on top of the pond. And skaters on a warm summer surface. Under the pond, Minnows dart through waving forests of grass while a brook trout lurks ready to lunge. There's the brook trout right there. Over the pond, we lift and dip and pull past a row of painted turtles on a waterlogged tree. There goes one turtle. They slip off and away, splash, gurgle, gurgle sploosh under the pond. Over the pond, Cattails rustle and shush in the wind. Listen close. Look, three red-winged blackbirds waste by. One has grass for her nest. Under the pond, a caddisfly larva begins uh, to build a home of her own, a secret shelter of pebbles and sand. I think it's this little pile right here. Over the pond, the shadows of trees lean out from the shore. We coast under a low hanging branch. A moose looks up with a mouthful of water lilies. We've interrupted his lunch. And there they are. Under the pond, beavers dive deep. They pump with powerful tails and rise to the surface with delectable roots from the mud. So they like to eat roots, I guess. And they like other things like trees. Over the pond, the wind gives us a push and stirs the light dappled leaves on the shore. There on a branch, a new goldfinch teeters, finally ready to fly. Can you find the, gold, the goldfinch up in the nest? Under the pond, tadpoles are changing, learning to hop. They're losing tails and growing legs and growing up. 
over the pond, there at the shore, tall and silent and still, is a great blue heron that stares down into the deep. It tenses, takes one long leg step. Oh my goodness, where is it going to go? You see what it's looking at under the pond? I don't know if I could see it. Well, here it comes, and it strikes. It catches a wiggling quicksilver minnow from where it was hiding under the pond. I guess it stirred up some of the dirt on the pond, and in the bottom of the pond. Over the pond, we drift, heads tipping up to the sun. A woodpecker clings to a teetering pine, digging for ants. Do you see the woodpecker? Digging. Where is that woodpecker? Oh, there it is. They're way up, looking from way up high down. Under the pond, an otter claws for freshwater mussels. Here comes the otter. The otter be watching this. There we go. Over the pond, a sleepy dragonfly lands for a rest. His spindly legs tickle my knee. Do you see that little dragonfly on the little boy's knee? Under the pond, dragonfly larvae watch what swims by. They catch minnows in monster fast jaws. Wow. Over the pond, the shadows stretch. Ospreys circle on quiet wings. Raccoons and mink stalk the shoreline for supper. Under the pond, with a flip of a tail, a crayfish disappears into the dark. And there's the crayfish way down here. Over the pond, we head for home. We glide, swish, bump, tight up, right up onto shore as a far off loon calls good night. And there's the loon calling good night. The sky turns from sunset to dusk to dark. Night settles over the pond, the prowling catfish and drowsy turtles, the scuttling crawfish fish and tadpole turn, turn to frogs wading herons and stalking raccoons and the hidden world under the pond. Do you see the stars reflected into the pond, boys and girls, and the ripples going outward? It's beautiful. Wow. So this, this author added some of the bugs that are at a pond. Bugs like whirligig beetles and dragonflies. And um, I've seen at my cousin's pond when I was a little girl, we would go there. It was called Damon Pond in Massachusetts. And we would get big horse flies or big lots and lots of dragonflies. They have those double wings and they're just beautiful. So if you're looking for ideas, have mom and dad help you look on Google for pond animals and other things that live on or near a pond. And you will have all kinds of ideas for how to make the pond that we're going to make this weekend and next week. Um, it will be fun. It's part of our, our world. It's part of our, our Earth Day study and science and, and how the life cycles of animals are and uh, especially the pond life. And every one of us lives near some sort of pond. I live right nearby to a um, a group of ponds. And a pond can be really big. My cousins in Massachusetts, we would call their pond a lake. But in Massachusetts, they call their lakes a pond. Go figure. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed Over and Under the Pond. I did. It set my mind to all kinds of memories and lots of imagination about just how are my students going to make their own pond. All right, we'll talk later. Have a great afternoon and evening. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.